The Big Show with Night and Day. Any time is a good time for a thick shake from Night and Day. Welcome to the biggest show on earth. Our biggest show. The biggest. Biggest. This is big. The Hauraki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue and Keezy. Oh, g'day, you mad bastards. Great to have your company this Monday afternoon. It is the 2nd of September 2024 and you, my friends, are listening to The Big Show brought to you by Night and uh, are we going down or are we know. staying? What's happening here? <laughs> Mogi bailed on us. <laughs> I was trying to think new there. I think I worked for a while until we dipped out. Yeah, sure. Other than that. Uh, how are you going, you stallion? You're going pretty grouse, actually, you mad dog. <laughs> yeah, good, good. You're a sick son of a bee, eh? I've been hearing a few things about you. We'll talk about it over the course of the show. Oh, but really? You are a sick bastard. <laughs> yeah. That's true, that's true. G'day, Keezy. Great cat, man. What is that, a pheasant? <laughs> it's a duck. Oh, oh a duck. that makes more sense. Oh, is yeah. that when you do your duck hunting? No, it's just a hat with a duck on it. Oh, right? oh I don't right, know okay. you had an affinity for ducks, man. Pug son gave it to me. Oh, oh right. He's yeah, getting yeah. rid of his shitty cat. No, nah, he's a big duck guy. He had too many of them. Well, I tell you what, the combination of your green duck hat and your green, your sort of weird, slightly weird green hoodie, uh, you're looking sharp, man. As always, Keezy, how was your weekend? Yeah, it was great. It was really good. good I had, stuff. Uh, it was really relaxing, but also the right amount of fun, the right amount oh. of DIY, did a bit of renovations. Oh, sure. yeah. Did you do uh, it yourself? Yes. Yeah. And with my wife. So she did it? No, no, no. She was there as well. So oh, we right. both DIY'd. Right, okay, cool. Do it ourselves. We DIO'd. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it was great. You look good, by the way, Jace. Really Thanks, good. Man. Is that Thanks. a new haircut? Oh, no, it's the one I had last week. Oh, yeah. Oh, is it? It's just really coming into its sort of shape, I suppose. But also, it's hard for us to tell because you go get a haircut and it looks exactly the same anyway. <laughs> right, So I just assume you've got a new haircut. Uh, no, it looks, it's it's the same as last week, Keezy, but it is looking good, I agree. Hey, now, That's speaking not of... what I said. Speaking of looking really good, hell of a show ahead, fellas. Oh, my God. I've got to uh, speak to old Charlie Garb about the oh, Warriors. Mm. Sean Johnson's last game, man. Oh, what a game. Great victory for them. Uh, and think about the season. Season overall. Oh. Got some Father's Day chat, of yes, course. Yes, of course, of and course. I need an update on Mogi's scurvy. Oh, yeah. Because. And, and I tried to get Oasis tickets over the weekend in the UK. So we have a little update there. Oh. Yeah, good stuff, mate. In the meantime, here's Tool. The Hauraki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue, and Keezy. Yes, indeed. Live there on the radio, Hodaki Big Show this Monday afternoon. The time is 12 minutes past four o'clock. And I forgot to say at the start of the show, Maggot Monday, of course. Uh, if you want to text us on 3483 and name someone for your Maggot Monday, fill your boots. Yeah. That's just someone you know who's a massive maggot. Yeah, yeah. totally, man. Um, now, yesterday, of course, Father's Day, uh, Mogi, and you're a father. That's true. Talk us through your Father's Day. You mind your damn business, man. Okay. Um, how good. We just shut up and get on with it, don't we? Oh. Fathers, man. Yeah. We don't bang on about it at all. Totally, oh, yeah. man. You notice that, Keezy? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, well, actually, I had a bit of an interesting one. Uh, my wife. My wife! Jace. Come on, man. And my daughter. My daughter. And I don't know how much she had to do with it, if I'm completely honest. Um, they got me a, uh, a night's accommodation at a hotel in the city here. So I went and had a um, staycation by oh. myself. Yeah. Pretty good. It was so good. good, man. Pretty good. Went along there, and because yeah, went along. Um, had a had a nice bath there, Keezy. Oh yeah. Why well, you just single me out with all the bells and whistles, brother? Oh, oh yeah, I yeah. Love yeah. Bath you suds yourself up a bit. Well, this is the thing, man. This is the thing I find when it comes to the suds. You start getting bubbles in there, you can't see what's happening downstairs. You know what I mean? No oh, bugger. Because I'm completely nude in there, Keezy. I'm not wearing anything. Oh yeah. And, and you if you I've got to... bubbles, yeah, then how can I see it? But do you need to see it? Why wouldn't I want to see it? <laughs> you should see, Keezy, let me put it this way. You should see it. All right. Mm. Mm. So I had a lovely bath. Uh, just Can I just put it this way quietly? I'd love to. Right. Cool. So you had a bath. Um, very nice hotel room. Very nice. I don't, well, I don't have huge requirements. I will say, though, there was, there was nowhere to smoke darts. Right. What's the guts with that? 
Aren't you off the darts? Yeah, I'm off them. But if I was on them, I'd oh. be fuming about it. But they did have a window that opened up onto a rooftop, and I thought to myself, well, surely people go out here for a dart, but I couldn't fit out the window, Keezy. Right, you tried so to I didn't get have out. To, didn't have to test it anyway. Just if I was smoking, yeah, I'd think okay. to myself, well, I might be able to have one out here. Because it sounds When like, we were down yeah. in Wellington just recently, actually, I was stoked to see that my hotel room had a little balcony. Oh, beautiful. Darts are plenty for old Hoodie J. <laughs> That's cool. Anyway, so then I, the, the best thing about it was I was able to sleep the way I sleep, which is to wake up 10 times a night, have a uh, drink about 50 litres of water, Loudly. bang around on the table, um, you know, pass wind. Yes, um, oh, that's a joy, isn't it? Go, and off to the toilet and all that. And I didn't have to worry about waking up uh, my wife, which was really nice. And then I woke up at about five o'clock in the morning, as I am wont to do, and I watched the Warriors replay. Yeah. And I jumped on the I jumped on the old phone there, ordered some breakfast up. They sent up some breakfast. They sent the breakfast, Jace, you'll love this. And they sent it up with a toaster. So you toasted your own toast. Okay. So you could have fresh toast. No, wow. You're, you're meant to love this. That's... It would be hot. What do you consider that they should have put the work in? It's a bit lazy. I prefer they put the work in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they must have about 500 toasters. Yeah, that's, that I've never heard around of all over the place. I've never seen it before. Wow. I was blown away. Yeah, man. Um, so I did that. Watched the Warriors. That was great. Then I watched the All Blacks. I watched them around the wrong way, I think. Mm. Um, anyway, and then I thought I'll go to the gym and I'll go for I'll go up to the swimming pool. Ugh. And I thought, you know, it's nice to get to a hotel, get away from the kids, blah, blah, blah. Well, it was like a kids' club in Fiji. Sure. <laughs> there was about eight thousand kids in that pool, uh, and just as many adults. Um, so that was sort of the end of it. In the end I just sort of uh, went home on the Sunday, so I still had Father's Day with my family. Proper, which, yes. which was, you know, okay. Take it or leave it. Sure. How yeah. about you? What did you do? If you want to know what I did, go and listen to our podcast. Oh, yeah. yeah. It comes out at 7.30. Does it? Tonight. That's so cool. Do you love a Father's Day, then? Oh, generally, they don't happen in my house, so. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't like to be made a fuss of. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it sort of suits me fine that no one remembers remembers it, you know? Yeah. Do you want to know what Mother's Day is very, very big in our house. Yes, Keezy? What I'm getting for my dad? What's that, mate? I'm seeing him this weekend, so I'm going to give him his present then. Oh, he's going to build you a deck, is he? Well, he is going to do that, yeah, but that's unrelated. <laughs> the Hodaki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue and Kesey. Yes, indeed, guns. Mm. Mm. Roses, of course, uh, the Wars last game this weekend. Uh, fellas, and all season we've been speaking to the one and only Charlie Gubb, uh, read the Warriors, and Charlie, you mad bastard, how's life? No, life's good, brother. Another Monday under the belt. Yeah, mate, good on you, you backbone. Now, listen, Charlie, um, let's talk the game first. Great victory for the fellas. What were your thoughts? Oh, I was I was happy. It's kind of put like a bit of a bright light on the end of the season that was pretty underwhelming. Mm. Um, just like a standard Disney movie, really. Mm. <laughs> But yeah, Sean. You know, Sean saved the best for last, and it, yeah, it, it was the it's the right night to right way to go out for the season. You know, we can have a bit of faith for next year and and build on that. There's nothing worse than getting pumped in the last game. Yeah, of course, Charlie. Um, g'day, Keezy here. By the way, mate, hope you're well. Yeah, no, I'm well, Keezy. Yeah, I know that voice now. Yeah, cool. Um, so, Sean Johnson's last game, obviously his last game at Mount Smart Stadium, didn't go exactly to plan. We go and play the Sharks. We start really well. Uh, we keep them scoreless. This is a top four side. We even open up the scoring with a sweet little play, Shawnee Jada. Metcalf there, and things are looking exciting. We then massively switch off the taps for 40 minutes and then turn them on full strength for the last 20. Very exciting finish to the game. Dallin Watini's Lesniak, vintage performance. Why can't we do it for 80 minutes, Charlie, even though it was excellent? I just, it really boggles my mind. Yeah, Keezy, I think you're on the money that you summed that game up pretty well, actually. But I don't know why we can't do it. Everything's in patches. There's no just grinding it out for 80 minutes. It's just, you know, being pretty poor for a 20-minute or 40-minute patch. Yeah, and then we just come home real strong, or we start super strong and then come home um, not so strong. So I, I don't know what it is, but I think it's awesome for Sean to finish the season like that. But the positive thing is that they can kind of move on and start planning without him. So yeah. they're going to have their two halves 
probably Metcalf and I guess it's Tamari Martin or Chanel, depending on how the preseason goes, and then they can build on them with with the backup who's going to be there, whereas Sean was kind of in and out. Mm. Um, and I think we can all agree that things just weren't gelling for those first 25 Com- games. Completely agree, and I think, you know, it's I'm glad that he's made the decision and just so stoked from that he got to go out like that. Um, his last touch outside of um, missing the conversion um, was a try assist. It was a bloody ripper, and, uh, yeah, pretty thrilled for him. And in terms of the season, I mean, it just is one of those you flush it and you walk away, don't you? There's a uh, bit to do over the off-season. Hopefully we can get a couple of buys. Charlie, you're coming back, man. You're going to come back and play, brother. Oh man, I'm I'm actually looking for a training trial, brother. Me and you need to uh, get on, you know, get on the gear together. <laughs> I reckon, bro, we yeah. could do it. Totally. Big off season, man. Big off season. Cut a couple of Charlie Gub head ups. <laughs> Douche. Oh, yeah. Douche. Yeah, get ragged all backwards. That'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... I do think I do think it's going to be um, it's going to be a massive off season. Obviously, they're going to do some pretty serious internal reviews. Yeah. Um, over the next couple of weeks, because even though it finished on a good note, you can't really be too, you know, like you nah. don't want to have a repeat of what just happened. But we're in a good place. We got great juniors. We got Fisher Harris coming, who by all accounts is a great leader and sets the standards off the field. So it'll be um, be interesting. I'm I'm sure we got a big name signing coming too. Yeah, it, it, oh, I hope so. I really hope we get one in the halves. But um, yeah, I mean, in round ten we lost to the Roosters, thirty eight eighteen. I remember we were in here, Jace Keezy, um, and I said it was a shocker. We'd had an absolute shocker. And I said if we win five more games the rest of the season, we'll do well. We won the next three. We won six games total from round ten. Right, it is a as tough a season as a Warriors fan as there be, has been. It was pretty short. Well, especially when you consider, you know, what the start of the season was like, and everyone was hyped, and everyone yeah. there was wow fever going. It is, it is kind of disappointing at the end of the day, Charlie. It is disappointing, but that professional sport, it really, is. as you know, being a, yeah, a totally young no. junior. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know about I know about um, you know professional sport, not so much the losing part. Yeah, you know about the drugs and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Big time. Uh, Charlie Cub, for the final time this year, mate, would you like to give us your Porter King player of the game? Easy. I'm going to give it to Shawnee J. No yeah, why not? Out. And, um, yeah, he's... But before I go, who do you, who do you guys reckon is going to get in trouble this off-season? I'm talking with Pugsy about it. Oh. He doesn't know. He said he's too new, but I'll, I'll leave it to you boys. Who... You, what, well, you reckon one, one of the Warriors? Oh, someone's got to. Yeah. Um, well, the Warriors normally go pretty good. There'll be there'll be somebody um, across the wide at NRL. Um, oh, who's the usual suspects? Mm. Well, it'll be interesting to see um, how Jazz goes when he gets over to. I'm not too sure which club he's signed he hasn't with. Been signed yet? Yeah. Well, he has been signed. Oh, he just he hasn't announced it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so that'll be coming up. Yeah, I don't know, man. You got some inside goss on that one? No, I don't know. Maybe um, I'd love uh, I'd love to see Mitch Barnett getting a bit of ruckus. Oh yes, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I'd like to see that. Hey, uh, Charlie, listen, mate. Uh, we appreciate you joining us all season and love your insight. And uh, let's do it again next year if we still have a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, by, by all accounts, a couple of you will. So hopefully, <laughs> um, hopefully, we're we're back on again next year. But it's been awesome, fellas, and. The business is just, we're just in a, been in a real recession, so it's been great talking to you. Yeah, okay. oh, Get on, on you, mate. And don't forget, if you're in Wellington, you need a Portaloo. Hit up Porter King and Charlie Gubb. We'll make sure that you get the best quality Portaloo on the business. And we might just get you back for the uh, the final series as well, mate. Yeah, let's still lock in. Get yeah, let's do it. Good on you, Charlie, you legend. Have a great day, mate. Yeah, brother. The Hauraki Big Show podcast. Yes, indeed. The Foo Fighters there on the radio. Hauraki Big Show this Monday afternoon. And fellas... As you know, I went to the family batch over the weekend. And to be honest with you, I'm pretty lucky to be here today. Oh, yeah. Um, had a bit of a, bit of a, an encounter, I guess you'd call it, on the old Monaco Harbour there. Strange encounter of the hoity variety? Well, I guess it was strange in a way, not unexpected. I've always sort of anticipated that this might, might happen. I'm a pretty prolific swimmer when I'm at the batch. And, of course, a lot of stingray there, Mogi. So mm. I sort of felt like... One day, you know, I, what happened to me could happen. So not that surprising. Right, okay. So I went for a swim on the su- uh, Saturday morning. Pretty chilly, actually. It's quite cool. Did it bug you that it was chilly? No. 
It's the Unplugged Mind. Um, and I was, oh, I guess I'd probably swim at about a mile. Mm. Really? Um, and I felt a little sort of tap, tap, and then douche, the world went black. Oh. Um, and I went. Once oh. you go black, it's often difficult to go back, isn't it? Apparently so, yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're a mile out. Absolutely, yeah. man. Um, and being the sort of experienced sort of maritime person that I am, I immediately knew what had happened, and uh, I was attacked by a stingray. Wow. Um, and, of course, people that are familiar with, sting- with Stingray will know about the old Stingray death roll. Mm. Um, and the reason that everyone went, everything went black is the way that Stingrays actually hunt is, of course, they've got their massive wings. They do. And they sit upon their prey and they basically wrap their rings around the prey. And their wings. Um, and essentially form a cocoon. Yeah, a tomb. But, uh, so really? you're sort of – you're like – you're in a sort of roll-up situation. Like a sarcophagus. Yeah, like a sarcophagus. Very wow. very Thanks. similar, actually, Keezy, because people that are familiar with uh, stingrays also know they don't have a mouth. Yes. Um, and so the way that they absorb or uh, feed themselves yes. is to get uh, their prey in a death wrap and then they sink to the bottom of the ocean and just sit there for about a week. Are you serious? Because yeah, I thought yeah, they just yeah. sting you. Um, and then just basically suck all the nutrients and juices out of you and yeah. absorb it into their body. How? They don't have a mouth. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. It's through the skin, Keezy. Yeah. They, they literally absorb you and slowly break you down into a sort of slush. Did you not get taught that at school, man? No. Nah. Are you serious? what is going on? No, I was taught that they have a sting and they're largely pretty friendly um, and that they definitely have a mouth is what I was taught. Oh, Weird. Nope. Was I this did a fail. Tiata or something? Fail. No, no this is a total. Oh, to- yeah. oh, there you go. Um, but anyway, so I immediately recognised what was happening, and uh, fortunately at the moment I've been working hard on the boxing at the gym, and so I was in there just douche, 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 douche. Yeah. So it had you, you wrapped up? It wrapped me up and sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Wow. And um, so I just started boxing away there, using yeah. me up. It was, like, yeah. it was like I was back in the cage, That's basically. The one, man. My knees. Uh, no, I think I'd been in, under the water probably 10 or 15 minutes yeah. really? um, you, at that point. How did you stay down that long without drowning? Well, the amazing thing about the Stingray death roll, Keezy, is that it creates an air pocket. Mm. and so, so it came up, caught you and air, yes, and brought and the then, whole lot down. A whole lot down, yeah. Without float, okay. Um, and so, yeah, just a douche, a douche, a douche. Eventually, uh, uh, obviously had an effect because it just released. Yeah. Um, and old Hoodie J swam to the sea. It's probably about... 40 metres, he took me down. Right. Um, did, I swam did you have thing. to equalise? Yeah, well, I you know, blew up the old eardrums there because it's, you know, uh, it was potentially I could have ended up like so many people. Like if you go along a beach at high tide sometimes, you'll see an expired stingray. Yes. And they'll be in that sort of coil formation. If you open them up, you'll find a full human skeleton, generally oh, yeah. speaking. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Gnarly way to whenever, go. So I'm whenever you hear to be about here. people that, and they've disappeared, <coughs> yeah, there you go. Generally, it's a stingray. Yes, and that can be from anywhere. That yeah, can man. be around the ocean, the beaches, anything like that, or inland as well. They come inland. Oh yeah. Well, if you're if you're just going for a walk along the beach and you see like a human skeleton washer, I immediately think skele- um, stingray. stingray. So the whole skeleton washes up all yes. together. Yeah, in, in one piece. In, <laughs> oh right, because yeah. I thought they'd be disconnected. Uh, I just googled. So this. I just Googled it. No, it says, don't do that, Casey. No, it says that they have mouths under their body, so that's obviously wrong, right? So I should let them that's know. That's that. What breed is that? I was going to yeah. say the very thing. Oh, that just says yeah. uh, a New Zealand stingray? Yeah, one of them. That's right. Yeah, There's okay. many different types. Yeah, right, okay. Fire, that is terrifying. Yeah, man. I'm so glad you're here. Got a bit of a rash, but that's that's all. Made my dobies itch flare up a bit. Yeah, yeah. Because I like Far to out. swim nude, too. I don't know if I mentioned that. Yeah. Um, no, you didn't. Kind of wish you had is a red hot chili peppers. The Hodaki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue, and Kesey. Get lucky, eh, fellas? 
<laughs> I wish. Yeah, yeah. Hey, now listen, uh, plenty coming up after five o'clock. Like in- what? Including, did Moogie get Oasis tickets? Ooh. Also, Keezy has a new account that he's opened. He's going to tell us all about it. Is and that if- really content? Yeah, total. Well, you put it in the chat. Yeah, true. Um, yeah. Also, Sport Chat. That's oh, right. Sport over the weekend. Um, get into a bit of rugby chat. That's right. You've got America's Cup too, which you're watching. A bit of Paralympics action as well, so we could do some what's going on and Gay Perry. Yeah. Uh, also, make sure you keep an ear out for the 25 grand fiddler. It is currently happening here on Hodaki. If you hear a song play with some fiddle mixed into it, call us on 0800 Hodaki and you could be in to win $1,000. That'd be handy, eh? Extremely handy, Jason. It could happen at any moment. Particularly if you've had like a, uh, a massive weekend and you're you're blown out a little bit and you look at the old bank account on the Monday mm. morning and gone, ooh, jeez, need to do a bit of uh, damage control here. Exactly. So keep an ear out and get ready to call 0800 Hodaki. Beautiful. The Hodaki Big Show with Jace, Mike and Keezy. Tune in weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Welcome back, you massive bag bones. Hope you're getting through your Monday tickety-boo. You're listening to The Big Show brought to you by night. And day. Thank you. About bloody time. God. You're welcome. I nailed that, man. I keep thinking you're wearing a onesie, Keezy, because of your green hat and your green hoodie. They all sort of, because you like to coordinate them. I keep thinking you're in a onesie. Onesie, Keezy. Yeah. As if I would do that. Hey, now listen. um, Keezy. What is the uh, night and day special today? <laughs> uh, let me just check here, Jace. Great question. Well, it says here, obviously, every day, $4.50 barista made coffee. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it also says here, that's a hell of a caffeine fix. Yes. Uh, but it also says today's uh, night and day special is actually a mogi special. Oh, good oh. stuff. Yeah, so basically it's um, rice and chicken and overnight like sort of oats. really dry... Plain, non-skin that's kind of right. chicken that's been dried out, and they can microwave that for you if you want. Right, uh, overnight oats, uh, like a smoothie with some kiwi fruit in it, but that's it. Um, some tofu and a protein bar. Oh, one of yeah. those. How much is that? Uh, it's twelve ninety nine. It's called the Mogi Scurvy Special. Yeah, the Scurvy Special. Yeah, yes. yeah, that's right. Speaking of which, we'll be having a scurvy update uh, <laughs> d- to see where Mogi's yeah. up with that. If anyone's just joined us, by the way, Mogi's got scurvy. Well, we'll talk about it or later. Or does he? <laughs> oh, wow. A pirate disease. Big hour ahead, and of course, always keep an ear up for the fiddler. You never know your luck, New Zealand. In the meantime, here's Soundgarden. The Hodaki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue and Keezy. Yes, indeed, Stone Temple Pilots there on the radio. Hodaki Big Show this Monday afternoon. The time is 11 minutes past 5 o'clock and all is well. Can I just say, man, I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, same. Um, It's a major announcement uh, that... Keezy's going to be making today, and so we thought we'd give it the prime uh, slot on the show. <laughs> this is breaking news. <laughs> Fellas, <laughs> huge news in the Keezy household. Yeah. I've opened an- another account. Oh, or bank account Keezy, they call them. They actually do call me that. So if people that don't know, and I don't know why this is breaking news, actually, but... Um, well, it's pretty bloody significant. I know... How important your accounts are to you, Keezy. Yeah, they're really important to me, Jace. People that don't know, like maybe two months ago, my wife and I sat down and did like a full accounting sh- scheme on our banking. Yeah. My wife. So now, so now we've got like uh, you know special accounts for our bills to come out of special accounts where we save money every time we get paid. A certain savings. Amount. Account. Savings. It's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah, savings. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, what wow. We, that's what we call it. Yeah, that's um, a good idea. We've got another account called Holidays. What's we that for? Save up for our holidays. Oh, oh. sounds like savings as well then, it's is it? Yeah, kind of but you're holidays. holding that off. No, we put that in a different account. All right. And mm. then it's like once we've got enough, we can go on a holiday. God, you've got a lot of fee, bank fees you get in there, but all good. Yeah, yeah no, nah, yeah, nah, they're all included. It's all good. Um, so I've got a new account, and after much, we had a meeting last night, my wife and I, and I've... Was fi- it a flat meeting? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's only two of us in the house, but Can, it was a flat meeting. Who calls for those? I called for this oh, one. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I've got a new account. It's called Motorbike Account. Oh. Which uh, I'm just going to give myself one of these. Because for a number of weeks now, I've just I've been trying to convince my wife that I should have Mo- a My wife. My wife. 
trying to convince her that I should have a motorbike, a vintage motorbike, something I'm passionate about. And she finally said, all right, here's how we're going to do it. We sat down. Oh, she told you how it was going to be. Well, she, she had thought about it, you know, because sure. we've got joint incomes and all of a sudden I want to take away a whole lot of that for my own personal little project. Enjoyment. Sure, yeah. So the idea, we've set up a, a motorbike account and a motorbike safety account. So the motorbike. So you got two accounts. That's right, and of course I've got my fun account. Yes. So every week and I the get, holiday account, the savings account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, my, and the bills account. That's right. Yeah. And, and my fun account currently is where I get to have fun, like have beersies, yeah. go out for dindins. Uh, and now I've got a motorbike account, and every time I get additional income, uh, one eighth of that goes into my motorbike account. One eighth. <laughs> so no, but hang on. When are you planning to buy this? Twenty fifty. So what? One eighth of my. <laughs> How good has it been, married, Keezy? It's so great. So, and then you've got the motorbike safety account because she's like, "Look, I don't want you out on a motorbike without a helmet." So I have to save up for that. Isn't that? Does that? Would that not come out of the same so, account? Yeah, I was going to say, can't that just be the motorbike account? No, because that's for a motorbike. motorbike. This is for motorbike safety. But how much money do you need to save for a helmet? Uh, quite, it's got to uh, be an open face because you won't get anything over your massive honker. So that's like, that sort. That is exactly what I'm getting, an open face one. Uh, so one quarter of my additional earnings goes into the motorbike safety account. So you're gonna get you're gonna be able to buy the safety gear twice as fast as you're gonna be able to buy a motorbike. Well you can never be too and safe. It's can more, you? And it's more and it's cheaper. You, all right. you have to do is buy a helmet. Yeah. Okay. Or uh, maybe some leathers. Oh, oh I don't know about your leathers. Um and yeah. then I'll also and then we've got and then also for things like registration, you know, and insurance and stuff. So we've set up a miscellaneous motorbike account. Okay. Which is where, uh, and that's going to be not obviously a, a, one, miscellan- a miscellaneous bike motorbike account. account, and that pays for like insurances and regos and stuff like that. And then between those, eventually, I'll be able to finally start saving up for this motorbike. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited, fellas. Um, mm. It's going to be great. And then, of course, <laughs> any petrol, because it's riding a motorbike's fun, that comes out of my comes fun account. Comes out of your fun account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But if we take my motorbike on holiday, like I convince you to go on a holiday with it. That comes she out of the holiday it. account. No, that comes out of the uh, motorbike miscellaneous. Oh, does right, it? Right, okay. Yeah, because yeah, it's yeah, sort yeah. of miscellaneous use of the motorbike. Yeah, so I'm just really excited to yeah. um, to finally become a bikey, you know? Yeah. So, uh, when gonna... you say vintage. Yeah. He what? means shit. Yeah, what I mean, <laughs> what time period are we talking when you say vintage? From when you are a boy. So, like, 1980s, 90s. Early 70s. I bet there's about a thousand people out there who have just heard that and are now just going to sell their motorbike. Well, if they are selling it, give me, like, ten years and I'll buy it off you. (laughs) The Hauraki Big Show with Jace, Mike and Keezy. Tune in weekdays at four on Radio Hauraki. Def Leppard there on the uh, Radio Hauraki Big Show this Monday afternoon. The time is exactly 23 minutes past five o'clock. Bit of sporting action over the weekend. Let's talk some rugby union. Crouch, touch, pause, engage. Rugby union chat with Hoity J. Yes, indeed. Of course, the All Blacks over in South Africa. Um, what's the test match live, Mogi? Yeah. My wife and I went, let's do it at 3 o'clock. Let's, um, let's like get the old excitement back because she quite enjoys doing that too. Sure. Uh, as predicted, uh, the South Africans prevailing. Look, I've got to say the All Blacks probably took their chances. They uh, played pretty well for the first 50 minutes and then basically didn't fall apart, but... They had the life squeezed out of them by the South Africans. They got trapped in their own half. Uh, the bench, bench substitutions uh, hugely in favour of South Africa. We had quite a few inexperienced bench players coming on who gave away stupid penalties. Then we lost a man because of all the pressure and all the penalties Wolf we were giving away. A fussy. Um, so in the end, South Africa deserved victors. And it's interesting, you know, we used to talk about the All Blacks being the side that would not play that well but still win the Test match. Yeah. That's where South Africa is now. They didn't play well for probably 
50 minutes and we really took it to them, but they squeezed the life out of us and were deserved victors. Oh, I completely agree with you. I don't think they played very well and I thought we did play well. We did. Um, and then, yeah, ultimately, I mean, I thought their bench came on and I didn't think they made a hell of a lot of a difference, to be honest. I thought the change came when our bench came on. Yes. And then there was significant, just more penalties given away and that had accumulated across the game where the ref had had enough of it, which ultimately led to the binning. Yes. But I think it was a penalty count was 15 to 4 or 14 to 5 or something like that it's hard to win a test match against South Africa over there I really enjoyed the game it's a good game and we're not far off but yeah you're right I think if South Africa plays as good as they can I think we'll be in trouble but yeah a bloody good test match really can, enjoyed it can yes. I just say because I watched the game as well but I waited and just watched it when I woke up on the Sunday there all of our tries you know a few forward pack tries and stuff but they were really excited yeah, yeah. it was they through the hands yep. to Caleb Clark it was yep. it was they're, very exciting for they were creating space um, breaking the line yeah. it wasn't the the traditional springbok defence which was impre- impregnable yes um, yeah I thought we looked awesome so there's plenty to build on there and uh, Clark was at his very best uh, that try <laughs> with, with all the players were d- doing the dummy passes was yeah. so good can I also snazzy, say wasn't it obviously mm. um, that try that they scored, which is a clear knock-on, was a massive debacle. Uh, as yeah. usual. But listen, um, scarily, uh, there's sort of rumours going around at the moment that the South Africans going to make massive changes for their second for the second test. <coughs> uh, and well, if where they are you did, hearing that, man? If they deduce us there, then, you know, she's looking a bit grim. Is she? Yeah. Now, also at the moment, uh, the Paralympics are on. Uh, really enjoying that. Have we got a bit of a medal table update there, Keezy? <laughs> The Big Show Medal Tally Update. We are back to Paris. Yeah, man. I missed this music, actually. Uh, New Zealand doing pretty well on the old medal count there. So, obviously, up in first place, you've got China. Yeah. 33 golds, 27 silvers, 11 bronze for a total of 71. New Zealand becoming 48th. Two silvers and one bronze. We've got three medals. But overnight, uh, Hson, she is our sprinter. She set a Paralympic record and then eventually came second to China, who took the gold. And the only reason they took it is because they broke a Paralympic record after she did. Oh, really? And so she was just pipped at the post there a oh. wee bit. Uh, plus, Nicole Murray uh, also got a bronze medal in the cycling as well. You were saying, um, Ogie, you were really enjoying the fencing. Fencing's bloody good. Actually, yes. just on um, Nicole Murray there, I think that's the first uh, medal we've got in cycling at the Paralympics. Oh, really? Because yeah, yeah. I think she got fourth last we've year. We've got quite a long... Uh, last well, time. last year. Last yeah. time, uh, We've got a long and storied history in the cycling, kind of course, don't we, Jace? Yes, mate. Um, yeah, the fencing's bloody good. I like... Uh, it's, yeah, I just... I love watching all like, of it. All those sports that you just never see unless you're watching the Olympics. That's yes. all the Paralympics. You don't see a lot of fencing, Keezy. Well, obviously. And as a matter of fact, we should have that on our list of uh, things that should be in the Olympics to replace the stupid sports they've got in there now. Yes. Fencing, like if you're on a farm. Actual fencing. Totally. Yeah, actual fencing. Yeah, that's bloody That'd good. Be good. Uh, what have you been enjoying the most, Keezy? I've been enjoying watching a uh, friend of ours, Sophie Pascoe, Dame Sophie Pascoe, who's yes. presenting the show every night on TVNZ. It's her yeah. first time ever presenting on television. Wow. And she's been doing a great job. That's what I've been enjoying the What most. about the sport, though? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> where to begin? I'm not going to start ranking them one after the other, Mogi. No, it's good. Well, okay, top five. Swimming. Swimming's always good, though, isn't it? That's a staple. Yeah. Yep. I've tracked You must field. like the cycle. Anytime you get a, a, a medal, then that's a, that's bloody good stuff. That so was sprint. great. I, I, I was really excited to watch the um, triathlon, and then there was poos in the sin again. Was there? Yeah. Because it had rained the night before again. Ah. So there's still poos there. Um, Mid. Yeah. So those are probably my favourite five. I listed five, eh? Yeah, let's go to some ads. The Hauraki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue, and Keezy. Yes, indeed. Royal blood there on the radio. Hodaki Big Show this Monday afternoon. Old Pugsan come to, uh, came into the studio there telling us about his massive weekend. Woo! He's party boy, isn't he? He is. He's hey, a mad dog. He's going hard. Going he real hard. Hey, uh, but in the meantime, it's time for some Captain Admin. Oh, <laughs> is it time for Captain Admin, is it? Captain Admin! <laughs> It's actually really exciting. It's not just admin, fellas. It's bloody exciting. Uh, of course, Manuka Doctor are presenting Nika v. Caporello. David Nika, good-looking man. Deuce, deuce. That's right. He's a boxer, Jace. That is going to be live on DAZN.com, spelled D-A-Z-N. 
Facebook.com, by the way, if you're keen to live stream it. However, this is happening uh, the 14th of September, yep. just a couple of weeks away at the Viaduct Event Centre. We've got a backbone table. We do indeed. Yes, we do. That is a table with Jace and Mike there. I'm away, unfortunately, for the listeners. Uh, but there is a spare two seats next to you guys in the formal area. We're talking free food, free drinks. You have to dress formally and sit at the backbone table. If you are keen to be a part of that, text the word FIGHT to 3483 right now. You'll get a link. Into there. It's yeah. going to be awesome. Uh, uh, really looking forward to that, actually, Mikey. I've never been to a live fight before, so I'm intrigued to sort of get the vibes, sort of the, the, the feeling, the atmosphere. Yeah, same here. We'll start a brawl in the crowd as well. That's yeah. always a good time, man. Of course. I'll show you how it's done, brother. Yeah, no no worries. Hey, fellas, over the weekend, tickets for the Oasis tour went on sale. You hear about that, man? They're getting back together. I did. Okay. Who, yeah. Oasis? Um, and so they're doing about... They're doing about, I think it's 14 gigs um, or something like that they've announced across the UK. 17 dates, I tell a lie. Um, and I had a mate of mine that jumped online and tried to get tickets. So I thought, well, if we get tickets, it'll be pretty good. Yes. Um, so anyway, he jumps on the air. He gives me a little ring there and dear. Uh, I am going to go and see Oasis. Uh, at Wembley Stadium on Sunday the 3rd of August 2025. It will be their last gig at Wembley Stadium. So just going to pop along there for that. Pretty excited about it. Wait, so how you, good, so you how going. good. I'm going, man. I'm Holy going. cow. Yeah. Isn't Wembley like in London? It's in London town. That's ages away. It's quite a long flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll be yeah. asleep most of the time or hammered. Exactly. Responsibly. And is that on the weekend? Uh, yeah, I'll be back on. That's on a Sunday. So you'll be there on the Monday? Yeah, yeah I'll be back show? on the Monday there. Yeah, and good. Yeah, yeah, so pretty excited. And pretty reasonable. It's like 350 bucks for the ticket, which is fine. Uh, but I'm a big fan. Obviously, Wembley is a storied um stadium that's seen a hell of a lot of gigs, including um, Live Aid. Jace, it's one of the biggies. Yes. Um, Queen uh, at Wembley is one of my favourite concert mm. um, uh, movies. Uh, watched that a lot on the old YouTube there. So yeah, bloody thrilled about that. Bloody do, thrilled. Do you put that on when you're steamed? Do I, uh, the Queen, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not often you put that on sober. Yeah, it's so <laughs> sure. good. That's, ah. a, that's insane. So yeah. Well, you, look, you want someone to come with you, mate, look after you. Well, I've got someone coming with me. Yeah, the guy oh, I mean the someone tickets. else. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, have right. you got any tickets? Have nah. you got tickets? Yeah. No, nah, but uh, you, your mate could probably get another one, couldn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's sold out. I should point that out. Oh, right. It has sold out. Um, they had uh, just over one million tickets available and 14 million people trying to buy them. Wow. Wow, so that's like 14 tickets each. That's That would be not enough, right? And then people are online complaining that they couldn't get tickets... As Keezy and, J- and Pugsy share a little smile. No, nah, it's all right. It's all good. <laughs> um, but people were online complaining that they couldn't get tickets. Like, that's weird. Right. You know, it's like, yeah, lots of people want to go and there's only X amount of tickets. That's kind of how, it, that's works. how it works, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, people good are stuff, on there, So it'll be bloody good. So anyway, I've got to take next year off. Fair enough, mate. What if... To build up for yeah, it. Yeah, you know, yeah. And then then to recover from it. So... Obviously, the, the the talk was that they're going to do this initial tour, see how it goes, and if it goes well, do a world tour. Mm. What if they then announce, as we were joking about last week, that they're actually going to be Oasis at the Victoria Park here in Auckland, just down the road, and you didn't have to travel all the way over to Wembley? Look, I mean, as amazing as it will be to see um, Oasis at Eden Park, yeah, seeing them at Wembley might be a bit better. I actually like, said Victoria Park, which is well, even worse. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they yeah. can't play there. They yeah, can, no, that so. was, yeah, <laughs> was, be serious. I was just joking around there, fellas. <laughs> hey, speaking of great tunes, here's Kings of Leon. Oh. This is a great yeah. tune, is it? It is a great uh, tune. Do, do, what album? Th- this is actually, this is a throbber. Boosh. Don't Boosh. say that. Jace will Boosh. choose it Boosh. as his throbber. The Hauraki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue, and Keezy. Lenny Kravitz here on the Hodaki Big Show. The time is 5.56, coming up after 6 o'clock as always. What's for tea, New Zealand, with me? Keezy! <laughs> did, you, did you just fart while he was saying that? No. You did it? Okay, I could have <laughs> sworn he farted at the same time. I swear he farted just then. You're a then. sick dog, Keezy. Well, I am. Go run and have a sniff. No, you should be able to smell it from there. Um, also, of course, <laughs> what's on the TV with me? Mogi. <laughs> Uh, so make sure you stay tuned. <laughs> oh, hang on. Can I just actually say, yeah. yes. text through on 3483 what you're having for dinner. Oh, yes, please. Yes. Oh, yeah, and of course. we'll do that. And then uh, every text that comes through, include your name as well, in the draw for a $50 night and day voucher. All that after six. 
The Hauraki Big Show with Jace, Mike and Keezy. Tune in weekdays at four on Radio Hauraki. Welcome back, you massive backbones. You are listening to The Big Show, brought to you by night and day. That was you went, special. You, well, you sort of dropped out a bit. You wavered a bit there. Excuse me? You definitely ran out of balls halfway through that. Yeah, it was a shame because it was going well. Yeah, because me and Mogi carried on. I, really good. I felt like I held it together, to be honest. No, no, really. that's the, the problem. Yeah, 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 I held it all together for you. No, no, it was not good. Okay. Jay, seriously, look at me. That was really bad. <laughs> like, seriously, like, that was terrible. Yeah. Sorry, Teasy, I keep getting distracted by your cap. The little duckies on it. I'm wearing a hat with a duck on it one yeah, day, yeah. and I've worn it so many times. Sorry, I'm not getting fired up. Yeah. We're missing the point yeah. that yes. that was terrible, and we just need to park that and hope that tomorrow will be better. No, it's not terrible. I quite like the hat. But um, now, listen on the podcast outro today. Oh, we, we covered a whole range of stuff, actually, today. It was quite a good podcast, which you can see on YouTube, incidentally, if you want to check it out. Oh, I'd that's say, true. I'd yeah. say that'll be out tomorrow on YouTube. Okay. It takes Pugs about 24 hours to um, muster the energy to put it together. Yeah, it's true. What's that about? So uh, there's also a video up on the Instagram page right now. A great one. You should go check that out. Hodaki Big Show. Yeah, good. Uh, let's listen to the clip today, shall we? <laughs> well, of today's one. Yeah. <sighs> it's like people that know they're really good looking. You know, there's a certain arrogance about them. Totally there is, man. Yeah. No, I've noticed um, that there is. Yeah. Yeah. It knows it's impressive. He, and, uh, he it struts. Just, He's got a strut. He's got a swagger in his step. Just a quiet little smile to itself. It is. It's a knowing glance. Yeah. The, it's oh, a wink, it winks at itself in the mirror. I know what I'm about. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to go on about it. <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> that was Jace banging on about his donger again. <laughs> I, I would like to make the point. Fellas, that it was not me that brought that up. It was you, Mogi. Yeah, it was. You brought up my huge downstairs. He didn't say huge. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, now listen. What's for teen New Zealand? Text us 3483. I, I love it. Jace just says, hey, now listen, and then remembers, tries to remember what we're actually talking about <laughs> up next. Uh, text us what you're having for dinner oh, on 3483, yeah. and you can win yourself a $50 night. Mm. <laughs> Dave voucher. Oh, but a white town. Whoa, hang on a minute. Oh, Sound the alarm. Geez, oh, oh, what did I just. <laughs> the Hauraki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue, and Keezy. Yes, indeed, Queens of the Stone Age there on the radio. Hauraki Big Show. But right now it's time for. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys. Text here from Steve. <laughs> What's for Team New Zealand with me, Keezy? Bub, 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 yellow wheeze, thick crust, monkey porn, doesn't like thick crust, doesn't like monkey porn, fun account voucher boy. <laughs> Captain Edmund? Oh, yeah. Captain Edmund. <laughs> I'm not Captain Edmund, all right? <laughs> Sometimes I just have to read Edmund, all right? It's just part of being on the radio. Well, but that's, this is the thing. Captain Edmund would say that anyway because Captain Edmund doesn't want to reveal his superhero persona. Sure. Classic Captain Edmund so hang move, on. Captain Edmund. So if I was a superhero, my my superpower is just delivering Edmund yeah. when everyone else is having fun. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And being like, well, hang on a minute there, fellas. Got some Edmund to get out of the way here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've got some texts here on 3483. People are sending in what they're having for dinner. Oh, God. Great stuff, yeah, mate. What's that about? Uh... G'day, G- huh? With that puke noise in the oh. background. G'day, fellas. Ruben here. Oh, love. really? Ruben Love? No, Ruben Thorne. Oh, Ruben oh, Thorne. Okay, Ruben nice. Thorne. Former uh, All Black. Oh, God. Tonight, I'm in. I'm having Lake Orho Wagyu Ribeye Burgers. <laughs> it's pretty fancy. I've actually had. It's fancy uh, pants. I've had meat from Lake Orho before. It's amazing. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's slightly overrated, quietly. You can't just diss a small butchery on... No, it's really yum. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. G'day, fellas. Jack here. Oh, Smith me off. sure is. Oh, me off. Smith. It's not Jack. Yeah. G'day, <laughs> fellas. I'm having steak, eggs, and chips. No, nah, you see... No. I don't know why so many people are into that meal. It's just foul to me. Now, obviously the, eggs, egg. obviously the eggs are wrong. 
I also, I would contest, Jace, that the chips are wrong as well. I would too. Mm -hmm. Look, I'd like a nice green garden salad with a steak, something like that. That's probably why he or signed off. Or mashed potatoes. Or mashed potatoes and a sauce. You know. I don't mind the potatoes there at all. It's the chip. It's disrespectful to the meat. Yeah, I agree. I won't have I that. agree. Steak and chips is a classic combo. It, it is a classic combo, but it's... That doesn't make it right. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. G'day, fellas. Me and Dad are having crispy Who? chicken and edamame Who? salad. Doesn't Who's, say. Me and doesn't. Dad from Pakistan... No. Me and Dad, yeah. You know, the old, the ex cricketer. Jarvid, me and Dad. Jarvid, me and Dad, yeah. How do I know that's a real person? Well, I, know, I know it is, I, and I, the fact that you don't know it is, you can sound the alarm for yourself. <laughs> because that's racist of you not to know that. Well, hang on, I'm just. Here's a guy, like, here's a guy that scored 1,083 runs in 33 matches at six different World Cup tournaments. Uh, is the 44th best, best cricketer of all time, Jace, as you Thank well you. know. Yes. And as soon as his name is mentioned on this show, you refuse to believe that it's the name of a real human being. That is disgusting. <laughs> well, can I just say, for the sake of Jace's career, I'm glad that it's a real person. Can you just read Jarvid's And he text, sounds please? like a pretty good cricketer. Uh, me and Dad are having crispy chicken and edamame salad. Apparently the old lady's getting the ingredients. The old man's going to cook it when we get home. Yeah, yeah, chicken drumstick emoji. Mm. This sounds quite good, actually. It does. I like a indamame bean. Jarvis' parents would be pretty old. I'm surprised they're still cooking for him. Yeah, true. S- sorry, what kind of bean? Indamame. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, I can never say you that put word. put an N in there when it doesn't need one. Ed- edamame. Ed- Drives my daughters crazy, I can tell you. Can we get some edamame beans, please? There you please? go, nice. Oh, was that right? That's was yeah, it? nailed it. Howdy from Sunny Nelson. Oh, howdy. Mandela. <laughs> Bacon and egg bagels for tea tonight. Bit of brekkie for dinner. Well, that's what you're having for dinner, are you, Jace? I'll get into that later on in the show, what I'm having for dinner, mate. Oh, well, you mentioned wait. it to me earlier. I was disgusted, oh. frankly. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Want one more? Oh. In your own time, Keezy. Yeah, one more. Bloody hell. Okay, here comes one more. The Hodaki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue and Keezy. Yes, indeed. Pluto there on the radio. Hodaki Big Show this Monday evening. But right now it's time for... What's on the telly with Mike Minogue. Yeah. It's TV, man, honestly. Television. Okay, so um, I finished watching The Union, The Union with Mark Wahlberg. Is it on Yeah, this is one that's been taking me a year to, a year to complete. Uh, well, a week or so. And I take back everything I said about it. It is absolute garbage. <laughs> Wait, and you really should, bad? And you should not watch it. Didn't yeah. you say it was bad? Well, I said it was I said it was enjoyable. I was like, I'm enjoying it. It's got, you know, Mark Wahlberg is in it. He's charming. He's an idiot. All that sort of stuff. But as soon as it got from them developing the relationship stuff and who are these people and having funny scenes, and then you're stuck with the plot for the last hour. Yes. God Almighty. Right. It's God like, Almighty. They have just taken away anything that's good about making films and sure. they've just turned it into. It's just not. It's got nothing to do with films. Absolute shit. Don't watch it. Yeah, well, I. Out of five? Zero. As wow. previously discussed, I went away for the weekend. No television apart from the game. Yes. Uh, on Sunday morning. And then because I got up for the actual game at three o'clock, I'm a little bit earlier than that. Yeah, we've already talked about uh, this. Yeah, but that is on the podcast. Um, so if you want to hear the story there, go and check the podcast out. Uh, got home, did all the stuff, played Scrabble with my wife and went to bed at about 7.30. Got pumped in Scrabble. At, at Scrabble. Always. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. Good. I got, right. Yeah, no, I got pumped. <laughs> <laughs> but I was tired, so, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah sure. No. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> I was tired, man. I watched on TVNZ Plus uh, Oasis Supersonic. Yep. So it was good because... I'm one of the guys who's like, I know that Oasis are good, 
but I don't understand the hype. Yeah. So, and to be honest, I went down a big YouTube rabbit hole of watching them perform in the 90s and realising how many amazing songs they actually do have. And it's yeah. like, oh, okay, it's actually pretty crazy. Started watching the doco. It's cool. It's amazing how they started out. Like, the early stuff's very interesting. And for them to go from nobodies to performing at that massive concert in mm. three years, less than three years, is amazing. I just don't like the style of doco where you can't see anyone talking. Right. And it's all artsy, grainy footage. Ah, uh, yeah. I just want to see actual footage of them. HD. Yeah, but, I, but that, even the stuff that they had, they'd put like weird effects and stuff on to make it all sure. artsy. But I'm like, yeah. it doesn't need to be artsy because it's so cool and mm. retro. There's nothing that annoys me more when I'm watching something where you feel like you're on a ship in the ocean and it's rocking and rolling all over the place. That it, annoys it me. It is a bit like that. And also, you'd never see anyone who's speaking. It's vo- their voices over footage. Mm. Uh, for some reason, I want to see Liam Gallagher sitting there talking about how much of an F what his brother is and vice versa. You know yeah, what I mean? I want to yeah, see yeah. that. Yeah. But the story's amazing and the songs are great. Yeah. They're all right. And I'm on the train now. Are we about on the train, I reckon? Yeah, it's a good train. Did you get all the way through it or have you got, no, bit, I got, got a, to go? No, I got a quarter of the way through and my wife was like, this is boring. I don't understand any of it. Cause no so one, I mean, it's I, hard to understand. I can't see people talking and she just couldn't buy into it. Right. Because she just... I think it gets better as it goes on as well. You get to know more about their upbringing and stuff. Yeah, I've, right. I've, yeah. I finished watching it. It's a ripper. Yeah, I'll definitely finish watching it. <laughs> Solo. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Uh, oh. Brewery of the day. Yeah. We're off to, to find the brewery of the deer. The Horaki Big Show. Weekdays from four. On Radio Hodaki. Bon Jovi there on the Radio Hodaki Big Show this Monday evening. Now listen, all you tattoo enthusiasts, you need to listen up because old admin boy's got some news for you. <laughs> I'm not admin. <laughs> no, no, I have to play the admin yeah, thing. Well, you, yeah, you do. Captain <laughs> Admin! G'day, Captain Admin here. Uh, <laughs> it is pretty exciting. Taranaki <laughs> has got one of the biggest uh, tattoo and art festivals in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, man. We've been down there before uh, to promote it, and this time it's actually aligning. So it's going to be happening at TSB Stadium in New Plymouth. 250 of the world's best tattoo artists on the 23rd and 24th of November. There's going to be freestyle motocross shows, BMX shows. John Tuga's going to be there headlining on the music stage. And we've got a chance for you and a mate to win a trip from anywhere in New Zealand to New Plymouth for the festival with flights, a night at the Novotel, tickets, and a $500 tattoo voucher to top up. How good. How good. Holy helmet. Have you got any tats, Mogi? No, I don't. No, okay. Is it time to get some tattoos? You have to get to a point where you I remember at one stage you were considering, is it called a sleeve? No. No, no, You were tattooing your sleeve. I was what? You were getting your sleeve tattooed. Oh, was I? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't have to wear clothes anymore. I just look like I was wearing a shirt. That's right. Nah, I ne- I always loved the idea of it, but I could never settle on anything. Sure. And so I never did. I reckon go full tribal tats. Well, that was what my Generic. mates that's what my mates did back in the day, and so yeah. I'm glad I didn't do Everyone's that. Everyone's done that, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Would you yeah. Ever get- what about a portrait of me on not your you, back? Not you. Not oh. you. I don't know, but I, like, I quite like the new style where it's like um, you don't have to be good at tattooing. Everyone can just do tattoos now. You should sure. like art, didn't oh, it? Oh, like Pugs' tats. Yeah, it could just be like any old <laughs> any old garbage. Um, you know, if you know how to do- uh, doodle, um, you know, you can pretty much yeah. just close Pug, your Pugs eyes. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like well, you you was- to, in fact, if it does look good, it counts against you. But you just got to wear lots of different things, lots of different tattoos that don't sort of mean anything. <laughs> sure. And they don't uh, match or sort of um, line right. up together. Tell a story it's like all. a patchwork. It's yeah, a shambles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. were saying, Keezy, that you would, but you've got really sensitive skin <laughs> and you tend to break up. Yeah. You break out with well, the old eczema and stuff. One of the things I really wanted was to get behind my knees tattoo. Oh, right. <laughs> Yeah. And I just can't. Yeah, but it's so thin there now. <laughs> Even eh? the thought of the needle going there just <laughs> it breaks out. That would a be a, mess. that would be a hell of a place to get a tattoo. It would. Yeah. It would be pretty hurty. But, yeah, it would be hurty, Jace. Would uh, you get? You've got a couple of tattoos, but would you get anything a bit more substantial? No, I've only got one tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's enough. Yes. Oh, cool. And I only did that because my wife made me. Right. Well, actually, because my one of my mates has got a cool thing on his arm with his wife's name in it. Right. Uh, and then Lucy was Whoops. like, my wife was like, why don't you get something like that for me? Yeah. And I was like, nah. That's true. You never know what the future holds. Yeah. You know, I don't have to cross it out. Yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? But also, I don't need my wife's name written on my arm. I don't know. No, you don't. It's like you send me into town if I get lost, my wife's name's on my arm. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> so and that, well, yes. that's the thing. You don't need that because you've already got the tracking devices going. 
Hi, is this Loose? Listen, we've got Keezy here. He's pretty steamed. You need to come and get him. He's got your name written on his arm and the GPS coordinates of your house. Anyway, if you would like to win that trip for you and a mate down to Taranaki to get some sick-ass tats like old Pugsan, go to hodaki.co.nz and enter there. The Hodaki Big Show with Jace, Mike and Keezy. Tune in weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Yes, indeedy, that's the big show done and dusted this uh, Monday evening. What's the plans tonight, Mogi? Not a hell of a lot, mate. I'll go home. Uh, we're in the process of sort of sorting out our house a little bit because sure. we've been living there for a while and we've just got all of our pictures still leaning up against walls and nothing up against the uh, actually on the walls. Sure. So there'll be some debate around that. Actually, I'll, I'll run this by you tomorrow on tomorrow's show. Yeah, good. I've, I've come to a conclusion. Sure. I've, we've, we've, yeah. Sounds like renovation chat. It is renovation chat and mm. it's relationship chat as well. Oh, actually. wow. There's is it one and a half mogies? Um, no. Oh. Is it sport chat? No. Okay. No. Is it okay. Captain Admin? Um, you'll find a way to work some in there, I'm sure. Yeah, you always do, Keezy. Admin boy. Speaking of Keezy, what Captain are you doing Edmund. tonight? Uh, tonight I'll be going home having Thai green curry. Um, <laughs> Pork mints. Not a big fan of green curries. Cool. Yeah, well, none for me, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. That's a shame because I was going to invite you over for dinner. Oh, okay. No, no don't worry oh, about no, that. No, I'll come over. We're going to have a chat with your wife anyway, oh, so yeah, I must right. face to face. Uh, and then once she goes to bed, I'll uh, have a small glass of port. Pugsan bought me a bottle of delicious port for my birthday. God, what a, had some. What a yep. greaser. And, um, What's that about? It was from a place I've been to in Portugal as well. Wow. Jeez. And it's delicious. And then we're going to go online with our mates and shoot them up. Cool, man. <laughs> what are you doing tonight, Jace? Just wearing that green hoodie. I don't know why you have an issue with I my green hoodie. I didn't say, I just, are you just hoodie? wearing a green hoodie? Is this, you've been wearing a green hoodie all afternoon. It's a very nice green hoodie, Jace, it is. can Thank I say. You. Is Thank that you. waffle? Um, that is waffle. Waffle texture. I'm going to go home. I think we've got waffles for dinner tonight. Uh, sort of, we're going a bit sort of dessert orientated, uh, but you can put bacon and banana on top of them. Right. On top of your waffle. Are you actually? A bit of syrup. Yes. So, you, really? Yes. 100%. Totally. But it was nothing I, to do with the fact that he just said the word waffle. Bizarrely, no. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Bullshit. Um, <laughs> then probably watch a bit of TV, chat to my wife, yeah. uh, make love, go to the gym, and uh, finally go and put my head down at about probably two in the morning. Love before the gym. Back I don't bone. think so. Just quickly before we go, <coughs> make sure you check out our podcast. They come out at seven thirty every night. Search Hodaki Big Show. Good stuff, mate. Uh, Till tomorrow. See you later. Yeah.